AI passes the bar exam, and then it misspells strawberry. That's not random. AI is more like a savant, a superhuman at certain things, and completely broken at others. And the weird part? The split has nothing to do with what we'd call hard or easy. I'll show you exactly where AI delivers and where it wastes your time. Let's get into it. Often when people talk about AI, they talk about it in the context of a spectrum. So I, AI is either dumb or it's smart. It sits somewhere here. And people assume that over time, AI becomes more intelligent. This is true, but this analogy and way of thinking about AI actually is harmful to you getting the most out of it. A better way to think about AI is actually like this. So it's more of a savant. There are certain skill sets that the AI has where it's superhuman. You can you could see these yellow bars as representative as superhuman. So these are tasks that it's really good at. But there are other tasks where AI is completely idiotic and broken, where it fails fabulously. And that'll be represented by these blue bars. My goal in this video is to walk you through each of these six bars where AI is very good so you can get the most out of it in those savant-oriented superhuman use cases, and for the blue bars to give you compensating factors so if you have to use AI in these tasks, you can still get the most out of them by using these different workarounds. And finally, hopefully you'll be able to identify when these blue bars turn yellow because this map is not static, it's ever-changing. So these blue bars will become yellow over time as AI gets better at certain tasks. Now let's start with the yellow bars, where AI has superhuman skill sets. So these are the first six ones we want to talk about, which is AI is first off very good at drafting a first version of anything. Then it's really good at research and synthesis, explaining ideas to you in different ways, brainstorming different ideas and helping you generate new ideas, as well as doing data analysis and creating images. We'll talk about each one of these in more depth, starting with writing. So this is something that most people use AI for, which is just drafting emails. But the way that I'd recommend using this superhuman skill is avoiding the blank page concern that a lot of people have. is because when you look at a blank page, you're overwhelmed with the dread of having to start drafting something yourself for the first time. You can use AI by giving a ton context. So you can use dictation, just explaining what's going on, what you need it to draft, and it'll kind of draft out that first version, and you can make edits going forward. And this isn't just for emails, but it's for drafting proposals for clients, SOPs for your team, marketing copy, contracts, fill in the blank. There's so many different things you can use AI to draft that first version to go with. Quick pause in your regular programming. This video is brought to you by me, as always. So two things. First off, below is a 30-day AI Insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox so I can apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, below are a series of offerings to see if there's a good fit between the two of us, such as an AI community or one-on-one -on -one coaching. That being said, let's get back into the video. After writing, we have then research and synthesis. So this is, again, another thing a lot of people use AI for. So instead of me having to read a 100-page report, I can use AI to synthesize and pull out only the things that I am personally interested in. So we're taking hours of reading and condensing it down into minutes. And one way I'd recommend using this specific skill is oftentimes you have a very specific interest in a report or you're synthesizing research, whatever else. And oftentimes the executive summary in those reports doesn't necessarily highlight what you care about. So you can give the AI context saying, this is who I am, this is what I do, and this is what I care about. I want you to pull out the elements relevant for me and what I'm trying to do with this data set. AI then will take that information for you and give you back something that's extremely contextual to your, your point and the things you care about. And that's our second one, research and synthesis. The third one where it shines is being able to explain and teach. So again, oftentimes when you research a new topic to yourself, there are tons of acronyms and jargon. A lot of this is really complex and hard to get past, and it takes a long time to learn. The beautiful thing about AI is it acts as a universal translator. So it can not just translate languages, but it also can translate complex topics to something simple for you to understand. And not only will it explain it to you, but you can ask questions of it. So you can say you explained it this way, but I'm not really sure I understand point A. I understand point B's and C, but I don't understand point A. Can you re-explain that for me? So it brings true clarity to someone's overall research process and synthesis process. And it doesn't just apply to research. So say you're a business owner and you're looking at different types of software to buy for a specific part of your business. And you're wondering which of these are the most suitable for the things you care about. Maybe you don't care about the very specific specs to a piece of software. You only care about the ROI for your business. So you can ask AI questions about that, have it do a comparison of all the products, and then provide that back to you. And that's explaining and teaching. Now on to brainstorming. This is a skill that I firmly believe most people actually don't take advantage of with AI. Reason being is they probably assume AI can't come up with novel net new ideas. Well, sorry to break it to you, but humans can't either. Most ideas that humans come up with are kind of like Frankenstein versions of multiple ideas consolidated together. And AI is very good at doing this because it's been trained on so much data. What you can do is you can ask the AI, giving it context of what you're trying to achieve, the things you've looked at already, and have a lot of back and forth with the AI via a conversation. 
to then come up with new ideas. I've seen a lot of people get benefit from this where you're getting 50 ideas just in a few minutes and then you apply your own judgment to which ideas are most suitable for the thing you care about. That's the fourth, brainstorming and generating ideas. The fifth is data analysis. This is probably something a lot of people use AI for and if they're not, they should because it's very good at it. And the reason AI is very good at this and it's one of their savant kind of superhuman skills is it's really good at identifying patterns and large portions of data where maybe it would take you hours or even days to find anomalies patterns, insights from data sets, you can pass this off to AI, tell it exactly what you're looking for, and it then provides you back not just the insight, but also a visually beautiful dashboard to then kind of convey that insight to somebody else. So that's our fifth. Now under our sixth, which is image creation. So this is a recent spike. So the map has only recently changed in the last probably three months or so. And this is because the release of Gemini's new model, Nano Banana Pro. And it's not just creating images from text, but it also creates consistent images across time. So if you have a character or an object that you want to be inserted in a variety of scenes, the AI is very good at keeping that object or character consistent throughout all of them. And this has been extremely useful for tons and tons of use cases in business, such as creating ads, content, marketing campaign, landing pages, all types of stuff. So this again is another superhuman skill that has only recently come about for AI today. So we've talked about the strengths. Now let's focus on the weaknesses. What are the valleys, the areas where AI is broken or somewhat kind of idiotic? And these are the most common six that I've seen. So first off is AI lacks the ability to remember things over time. There are ways to compensate this, but it's not baked into the foundational model itself. Then there's hidden dependencies. So often AI can't necessarily see in the hidden dependencies that you have in your head. So this is another area we need to work on. Uh, knowing when it's wrong. Oftentimes it assumes that it's correct. This is the hallucination concept that people talk about. We then have judgment. It very rarely gives you high quality judgment because it lacks context. Again, we can compensate for this. Video generation, it's just still not there yet. It'll probably be there in the next six to nine months, but for now, it's not great. And then 100% accuracy. And this is basically comes down to the AI being 100% accurate every single time you ask it to do a certain task. It's not the case today. And honestly, I don't think it necessarily needs to be the case. There's an easily compensating factor for this as well. So those are the valleys. Let's jump into each one in more detail. The first one is memory. So again, when you talk to AI, oftentimes it has a fresh start every single time. Most companies today, so the big four, Grok, Gemini, Claude, and GPT, all have created features to add a memory feature. So it starts to remember different aspects of you. The things are more generalizable, such as your favorite color, your specific job and or business, areas of interest, where you're located, your gender, et cetera. It will remember those things, but these are new features that have been released only in the last couple of months. And also they're not necessarily baked into the model itself. These are just bolt on features trying to compensate for a weakness in the foundational model you're using. So that's one compensating feature of the companies, them doing it themselves. But one thing you can do to compensate for this weakness in AI is using projects and gems more often. So I've already talked about in a video recently on this, so you can check that out. The TLDR is you can create a very specific project, a custom tailored AI that remembers the context and everything that you care about for that specific task. So anything, anytime you come to it, it'll remember that thing when it uses it. So the context is baked in because you intentionally baked it in there. That's one area where AI is weak is memory. The next one is hidden dependencies. So what do I mean by this? Well, oftentimes when you ask an AI to do something, there's a lot of implicit assumptions that you think the AI understands about your process or your team. AKA there's tons of unwritten rules inside of your head and in your team and your business that you're not making explicit to the AI. So the key way to compensate for this, which takes time, but is useful, not just for AI, but many other purposes is documenting whatever is implicit in your head for a process or a decision and making it more explicit. So you can feed that into an AI so it can then help you with that process or task. So avoid those hidden dependencies. And you can even use AI in the process of making those things that are implicit explicit by having it interview you, create all types of documents, all types of things I talked about in other videos, but it's easy to do with AI. That's our second, hidden dependencies. Our third is knowing when it's wrong. So again, this is where hallucinations come into play. AI often thinks that it's confident and it often can be wrong depending on the type of question you're asking it. So I'd recommend when you're working with AI on a highly critical task, something that's important such as a contract, a big investment or whatever else, it's important that if it's an unfamiliar topic to you, you have AI help you with the process of research and synthesis, but after that's done, you wanna verify this independently either by yourself through another source that you've researched, not with AI, but by your own manual hands and Google, and or you run it by somebody that's an expert to see their opinion on this. And again, the map is shifting. So this is changing over time. Currently, GPT 5.2 has a specific benchmark that it tests itself against, and so does Claude, to see where it admits that it's wrong and or admits that it doesn't know. Admitting that it doesn't know is important because the more it does that, the more we can trust these models. And that's knowing when it's wrong. Our next one is judgment. So oftentimes people seek advice from AI, which is completely fine. 
But the issue is sometimes AI doesn't necessarily have the context associated to your situation. So what it might do is give you generic advice that it's been trained on, because remember, it's been trained on tons and tons of data sets. So oftentimes what it does is it gives you the average of what it thinks is useful for you. But oftentimes the average isn't necessarily useful for you. So what you need to do instead as a compensating factor here is giving it as much context as you can to ensure that it knows exactly what your situation is about. So it can then tailor the advice and give you more helpful and useful advice for your specific scenario. And an easy way to do this is again, dictation. So if you're using AI to get advice, just pull out your phone, turn on dictation and talk out what's happening. You can say exactly, you know, I'm doing this in this situation, I'm having this issue. This is my background, da, 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 da. Give it all the advice and say, what I want from you is to give me advice so I can then, you know, make X decision or Y decision. And it'll help you think through those items. And that's judgment. So our next one is video creation. My guess here is that probably in the next 12 to 18 months, video generation specifically for short form videos, such as 60 seconds to maybe two minutes, they're gonna be very high quality and hard to discern the difference between what's real and what's fake. But for now, most videos that are created are very easy to identify as fake. Reason being is that there's a huge sound discrepancy in what you're seeing. So oftentimes if they're in, like maybe they're in the wilderness and they're walking through a trail, in that video, you would you would think that the audio would correlate to that type of scene, but oftentimes the audio sounds like they're inside of a studio. So there's a huge discrepancy between those two. Also, there are other elements around physics and things like that. So right now, video is just not there yet. So you just got to wait for this. That's video. The sixth one is accuracy. So again, we can't rely on AI to be accurate 100% of the time just because the nature of the tool itself. AI is chaotic and that's the benefit of it and that's the strength of it. So we should lean into that instead of trying to rely on it to be 100% accurate every single time. And there are many ways that you can mitigate and or compensate for this weakness. One easy way is to swap AI out with code. So if you can use code for your specific use case, do so. And you can have AI write the code for you because AI is very good at writing code. And if you need AI for the use case and you still need it to be 100% accurate, you need to have a human in the loop. So you have the AI do the task, then that AI then passes that task off to the human if it's a case where it's likely going to be wrong. There may be 10 activities it does. Of those 10, maybe eight is 100% consistent, but two, it sometimes is wrong. And those cases where those edge cases where it's wrong, you just pass it off to a human for review. And that's our sixth weakness. But what about the skills that are transitioning, where the map is actually changing, we're going from a weakness to a strength. One that came to mind for me is end-to-end -end browser automation. We have OpenAI's Atlas browser, and we also have a, a cloud extension that you can plug into your browser anywhere, both of which can navigate your browser without you having to intervene at all. The issue with both of these is they're extremely slow, but I guarantee you in the next couple of months, these will both speed up in both their accuracy and speed, and a lot of people will get benefit from these. So it's important to prepare your business for this. One example of that, or use case for this, is asking a question to the AI saying, hey, check my CRM, draft any follow-ups for solved deals. So it's gonna go into your CRM, it's gonna sc scroll through all the different clients you have, it's gonna draft all the emails for you, it's gonna put them in a specific location, and eventually it'll allow you to actually have the AI send them as well on your behalf. So these are things that are gonna be completely automated within the browser. So preparing your business for this and knowing what use cases align with this weakness that would eventually turn into a strength in the coming months, it's critical to be ahead of your competitors. Now that we understand the strengths and weaknesses, I wanted to give you three practical steps that you can take right now to get a benefit from this understanding. So the first thing is to run a spike test. So spikes refers to those spikes of skills, the areas where the AI is superhuman. What I want you to do is I want you to take 10 real tasks that you've done in the last month. I want you to take those 10 tasks. I want you to head to your AI of choice, whichever the big four that you like to use, and then evaluate each one of the AIs on their ability to achieve that task, either partially or completely. Be honest. Is it really good or really bad? Mark each one of the tasks. Once you've done this, you know which tasks lean into the area where the AI has high skill and where they have low skill. So you know where to use AI in certain situations. After that, I want you to take those tasks and I want you to add them to an AI wish list. So this is going to be a list of tasks that are critical for your business's success over the next 12 months. I'm assuming you have a goal, a primary goal for the next 12 months for your business. After you've decided on what that goal is, you need to have a series of tasks that if automated partially or completely will dramatically increase your chances of achieving said goal in that time frame. So we can take all those tasks that aren't achievable right now with AI, we're gonna add them to our wish list. So anytime that a new model gets released by an AI firm, which is probably happening every month or two now, you can take those tasks and you can run them through those models to see if it can partially or completely achieve them. And this will help you understand when the map is shifting, when the AI is going from a weak skill set to a really strong skill set, because you have your wish list set aside and you're constantly testing these new models that are released with these tasks. And then finally, one thing I want you to do right now, today or this week, 
is to systemize one spike. So you've already tested your tasks and you know where the AI is very strong. For any of those tasks that are repeatable, what I want you to do is I want you to systemize it. I want you to create either a custom GPT, a GPT project, a cloud project, Gemini Gem, whatever else, and then create that so you can have that on a recurring basis so you don't necessarily have to mess with the AI anymore. You just come in, drop in the thing, it does what it needs to do, and you're done. This is where real leverage is created. So I recommend doing this as soon as possible and as frequently as possible for you and your job and or your business. And there we go. That's the map. And that's the way you should think about AI, not on a spectrum, but instead a scene of spikes and valleys where AI is strong and where it's weak. And it's important to note that this map is constantly changing. So the examples we talked about today for the spikes, AI is very good at drafting something for the first time. You should use it for that almost always. Next is research synthesis. It's very good at researching things and synthesizing it in a way for you to understand. It's a, a universal translator. It can translate jargon, acronyms, really anything in a way that you understand and care about. Very good at brainstorming ideas and coming up with ideas in a very short time frame. It's good at pattern fighting. So if you have any data analysis, throw it at AI. It, it'll probably find the anomalies and patterns better than you could within a very short time frame. And then image creation. It's very good at that only as of recently. So this is when AI has actually changed the map because this used to be in the valley side. So images have recently shifted to the spike side. And those are our spikes. What about the valley? So the valley we've talked about memory. So it's it's okay at memory now because we have a lot of compensating features in the models. And we also have projects slash gems that are available for people to use, but it's still a fundamental weakness in the model. The next one is hidden rules. So if you have anything that's implicit in your head that you wanna have an AI do, you need to be very explicit about that and document it for the AI to reference. Again, AI can assist with this process through reverse interviews and a whole bunch of other things I've talked about in other videos. The next one is confidence. It can be overconfident in a lot of areas. So if you're doing something that's critical, that's either a big investment or something that has a lot of liabilities associated, you need to verify either yourself or through a professional. Next is if you're doing something in relation to people and judgment, you need to give as much context as possible. So when the AI is giving you advice, it's tailored to you and it's not just generalized. Next is video. So this is going to be probably a six to 12 to maybe even 18 month see it kind of wait and see game where it's gonna get good at short form and eventually it's gonna get better at kind of mid to long form videos over time. And then last is accuracy. So if 100% accuracy is critical for you, I recommend asking yourself, can code do this instead of AI? Do I actually need AI for this? Because if it's code oriented, AI can write that code for you. And if you absolutely must have AI involved in that use case, make sure there's a human in the loop element for the areas in that task that the AI sometimes can be wrong. And that's when you have the AI pass off the task to the human for it to validate. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this, please reshare it with your friends. And as always, Two things. First off, Blow's a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox so you can apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, Blow a series of offerings to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. And now you know where AI works best. But here's the thing. Doing these tasks one at a time still wastes your time. The real trick is building AI specialists that handle these spikes for you again and again. I built over 100 of them, so let me show you exactly how to do it in this video right here. Go ahead. Click that video and I'll show you exactly how. See you next time, internet.